secure the objectives. Hello everyone, it is Steven here today, or Super Bruce91, and today I am playing some headquarters on the map Nuketown 2025 with two of my friends Q Stells and I am Beam. But today I'm not here to talk about that. Today I'm here to talk about the Black Ops 2 Revolution DLC and what my thoughts are on that DLC pack. So I know that the PlayStation 3 players do not currently have that DLC content and I have the Xbox version of the game so I have the DLC right now and I'm just going to tell you guys what I think about it and if you guys should buy it or not to. Okay guys well um, there are four multiplayer maps, a new zombies map, a new DLC weapon called the Peacekeeper, and there's a new zombie mode called Turn. So I'm going to kind of go through each map individually and tell you what my thoughts are on them. Okay, so guys, the first map here is um, Hydro, and this place takes and this takes place in Pakistan. It is pretty much a waterway, and the main feature of this map is throughout the dead center of the map there is a strip and every occasionally the map will uh, send water down that pathway and if anybody's caught in that pathway you are killed by the tidal wave so it's definitely uh, unique to that map in that sense there's not a lot of flanking routes the only way to get across the map is for the most part through that waterway or throughout the dead center of the map it's an alright map I think it's a little bit gray and gloomy kind of Treyarch colors which I'm not a big fan of but overall it's an alright map so the next map here I'm gonna go to is Mirage this map takes place in the Gobi Desert in China um, my thoughts on this map it's a pretty big map actually pretty complex definitely the most diverse um, map in this DLC I would say not my favorite though I mean this map is very uh, goldenish color it's very sandy and everything so I'm not a huge fan of the colors on the map either but overall the structural the structural layout gives you plenty of cover so there's no trouble being caught out in the wide open or anything I play this map many times and I, I didn't like it at first but it's really begun to grow on me so overall not a too bad map so I enjoy that map a lot okay the next map is probably the most unique map in this entire game it's called grind this takes place in Venice California Venice Beach and it takes place in a skate park now this is the first time that we've ever really seen something like that in a Call of Duty game and it works pretty well because there are now curves incorporated into the environments and the curves are actually pretty interesting to the gameplay so I like what they do with that map I think that um, it's a pretty balanced map. I mean, mainly the map consists of two corridors going around the map, and there's this one big building in the very center of it, which is the main high traffic spot of the map. And that's definitely the spot that you want to stay out of because, let me tell you, there's so much high traffic in there. You're better off just flanking um, throughout, like from the behind, on your enemy or opponents because going through the center of that map. The chances of you surviving are little to none. I really do enjoy the map. I like its colors. I like its layout of the map. So I really like the map Grind. And the next map here, in the final map, final DLC map, is Downhill. This is the first snow map in Black Ops 2. Kind of interesting how they did not incorporate a um, snow map to begin with on launch day, but that's just how it is. So Downhill. Um, it's, it's a pretty good map, I mean, this map is very, um, vast, it's very broad, it's very big, it's a big map, it's pretty much a lateral map, it's very straightforward, it's pretty much two side pathways to go down the map, and what's unique to Downhill is they have these gauntlets that are constantly, um, like, going up and down, it takes place in the French Alps, at a ski resort so the gauntlets are always moving and they like, go through like this little station and if you're in the way of those gauntlets they actually will, can kill you so you really do want to be careful about that because I've had quite a few times where I've been on like a 20 gun streak and I'm not paying attention and those gauntlets will kill me so you have to be careful of where you are and where those gauntlets are because they will they will kill you if you're not careful. But overall, I'd say that is probably my least favorite map of the DLC. 
it's just, I don't know, the map is generally slow paced and I'm just not a big fan of that. But I will tell you this, is that if you guys are snipers or anything like that, you guys like the longer range engagements, this map is definitely going to be your map to play. So, just my personal opinion, I like the close up maps where I can just get right into the action and downhill just doesn't provide that for me. But okay guys, um, next up is the Peacekeeper SMG. So this is a new gun incorporated into Black Ops 2. And overall my thoughts on it, it doesn't really act like an SMG. So if you're thinking that it's going to be an SMG, get your mindset out of that. You should really be preparing yourself if you plan on buying it. You should be planning for a hybrid between an assault rifle and an SMG. It doesn't excel at either category. It's mainly... It can be used for both close quarters, medium range, and long range actually, so it's pretty much an all-purpose gun, but really, all other SMGs in the game outmatch it in the close quarters environment, so it's definitely a mixture of the two classes, and it's an alright gun overall. I'm not going to say I love the gun, it's definitely not overpowered, but the first few days of PlayStation 3 gets this gun it's going to be used in every single lobby so get used to it so I mean it's not a bad gun but I can definitely see myself just kind of not using it like ever again because there's just so many more dominant guns in the game okay so we're moving on to the next part of the revolution DLC and the next thing that they've introduced is the new game mode called turn this takes place in the zombies playlist and it's a new zombies game mode where you can now play as the zombie. Now the main objective of this game mode is to spend as much time as possible as a human player, as a human being, and the object for the other players that are playing against you is to kill you so that they can be the next human and they want to survive for as long as possible. The game mode starts at 5 minutes and counts down all the way to zero. Once the time limit hits zero, the player with the most time spent as a human is the winner. Now, my thoughts on this game mode, it really kind of is unnecessary because it's just like kind of the, one of those game modes where you just play it once or twice and there's really nothing left to be done in it. I mean, it's just one of those game modes where it's a once or twice thing and you're just, you never want to really play it again. That's how I feel with it. I mean, there is no real reward for doing good in it. I mean, it's either you win, or the game just says you suck flat out. So, I'm not a big fan of it. And that's also one thing. They only gave you one map for the new turn DLC. The map is called Diner. If you know the first stop in transit, where, like where the diner is, it's that area. They give you that entire area for the uh, turn game mode. And that's the only area that you can play on. So... The turned, the turned uh, game mode is rather limited right now, so not a very big fan of that DLC piece at all, so don't expect too much from turned. Okay, so now the final part of the Revolution DLC is Die Rise. Now this map is definitely a great zombies map. For all of you zombies players out there, this map is going to be for you. I mean, this map, it's big, it's confusing. It's scary, it's fun just to play with a bunch of your friends. I mean, I've played Die Rise countless number of times with my friends, and it, it's rather interesting this map because they, a lot of new things are put into this one map that you've never seen before in a zombies game mode. Okay guys, so the main feature with Die Rise is that the perk machines are in elevator shafts. Now, this takes place on a skyscraper pretty much. It's a crumbling sky skyscraper that's pretty much falling apart. And the entire thing that this map is built off of is elevators. The elevators carry the perk machine like the perk machines from floor to floor. So, it's really all about luck. Whatever you get is luck of the draw. You never know exactly where any perk is. Definitely makes for some interesting footage and gameplay that you guys can have. I mean, you can get Juggernaut first one time, but then the next time you'll get Double Tap or something like that. So there is no certainty in Die Rise. Also, one of the new features of Die Rise is um, now, just like the Hellhounds from World at War, they've introduced a new type of Hellhounds. Every couple of rounds, like five or six rounds, they have these little crawling things, 
If you remember what these things were in Kino der Toten from the first Black Ops game, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. It's those like things that crawl like all over the walls, only that they spawn in all places imaginable and they jump around like crazy and they kill you. These guys really put this uh, difficulty of this map up, up there because it's just like a general tendency if you don't have Juggernaut by around 10 or 11, you're in a lot of trouble because I mean these things will overrun you and your teammates and I've died numerous times just doing that. So Dyra is definitely a fun map. I would definitely say for you zombie fans out there, it's a great game. It's a great map that they uh, put into the game. So that culminates the Revolution DLC that they are going to be releasing for PlayStation 3 sometime in late February. Now from what I know it should be $15 for the PlayStation 3 for all of that. Four DLC maps, one new gun, one new zombies game mode, and one new zombies map called Die Rise. So overall it's a pretty good package. Now should you guys buy this DLC? Well here's the main question you have to ask yourself. Are you going to be buying all DLC for Black Ops 2? If you answer yes, I'm probably going to be buying every single DLC. I highly suggest you go pick up your season pass for Black Ops 2. It'll cost you $50 and in the long run it'll save you $10. But if you're not planning on buying all the DLC for Black Ops 2, I would definitely say that you should consider buying this DLC if you're getting bored of the Black Ops maps because they can be rather stale at times. So if you're getting bored of those maps, you play Black Ops 2 a lot, I definitely recommend you check this um, DLC out. I mean $15 is not going to make or break you, but you know, overall if you want to revive Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for you guys, if any of you guys have kind of lost your way from this game, I think the Revolution DLC will definitely revamp this game for you guys. So overall the Revolution is actually one of the best Call of Duty um, map packs to have ever been released. So yeah, definitely a great start to the DLC season. I'm currently a season pass holder for the Xbox. And I mean, overall first DLC, great. I give it a 9 out of 10. Definitely worth definitely worth uh, checking out for you guys. But okay, that, uh, that concludes my review of the Revolution. Uh, map, map, map pack. So, uh, yeah, this video is coming to an end just about. So, um, yeah, I'm using the MSMC with a suppressor. With, um, pretty sure I'm using toughness, um, lightweight, and um, dexterity on this class. I'm using the spy plane, the um, spy plane, the lightning strike, and the load star. I only get one load star this game because I was dying quite frequently in between my kills. But overall, this was actually my first 100 plus kill gameplay that I got on Black Ops 2. So definitely, um, my definitely a very good gameplay for me because I remember I was so excited when I got my first 100 plus gameplay. Um, throughout this entire game's lifespan, I've gotten three 100 plus kill gameplays. So yeah, I mean doing pretty good in this game. I'm still going for my fourth, but we'll see how long that takes for me to get. So yeah, um, so my friends at school just want to let you know they wanted to, for me to give them a shout out. So I'm just going to say their names. Joe, Lucas, and Shadrach. This is for you, friends. <laughs> so this gameplay is about to come to an end. I do hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay. So right now we're just dominating them. <laughs> Me, Kirch, and Q Stealth here. We're just destroying them, and we ended up winning this game by quite a lot. So definitely good gameplay for me. Uh, thank God this gameplay is coming to an end pretty soon because let me tell you, my uh, uh my mouth is getting rather dry from talking so much. It's been 14 minutes. It doesn't even seem like it's been that long. Wow. Well, anyways, so, yeah, I went 122 and 29 at the very end of the game. So, pretty good gameplay for me this time around. So, I hope you guys will uh, check out my channel. This is my second video. Please help me out by hitting the like button, subscribing if you really do enjoy my videos, and comment and tell me what you guys think of what I'm doing with my channel. 
and I would really appreciate that you guys it means a lot to me just a simple comment a simple like or even just a simple subscribe thank you guys for watching see you later